Today we are going to make silicone oven mitts. Have you seen those yet? They're really cool. So there's a company called Around the Bobbin and they make all of these really fun silicone projects. They've got trivets, they've got um, mug rugs, they've even got a new um, item that just came out that's a baby teething ring and they're all pre-made silicone pieces. So the, while this is a quilted project, it makes a silicone covered oven mitt. The, the cool thing about their patterns is you can buy the pattern with the insert and then you can also just buy the refills. So you don't have to pay for the pattern every time you wanna make the project. You can get the pattern with the insert or you can just get the, the refill. What we're gonna make first is a Star Wars themed oven mitt. Well, because I want one. So I figured I have to make one to show you guys anyway. I might as well get something I want to have at home. The first thing I'm going to suggest that you pick up when you start this is some template plastic. I've got this shape and this shape. So I drew out my template with a Sharpie marker and I made all the reference points and then I labeled them. So this says um, template A and so I marked it as template A. Okay, so that was the first thing I did. It's a little hard to pin this to things. So the pattern already tells me what I need to cut out of everything. So I've cut out things that I could skip ahead on. I wanted to show you this fun little trick though, because, um, so some of the pieces I've already cut out. So like, here's a bit of our template. We need two pieces and some interfacing. Oh, the different sections of this pattern have you put things different ways together. So make sure you're reading the instructions. For instance, this is gonna be the part of our oven mitt that we're gonna see. So we need to take and fold it right sides together because we wanna cut out two. So I'm gonna take my template, which I've already marked onto plastic. You can fussy cut this, this if you want to. It's the other reason I like having template plastic. So like if I wanna make sure that R2D2 or uh, I, I, I want both of the boys kind of together in the mitt here. So here's my R2-D2, here's my C3PO. Remember, you're gonna have seam allowance, but that's okay. This is a really good time to use your sew tights. It's hard to pin through this, it's a real hassle. I don't wanna do it. So if I take my sew tights and I take my, my metal piece and I put it down on my table and I put my fabric and my template on top of it and then I drop the other piece, huh, magnets are cool. So this is going to hold it all together. If you feel like this isn't stable enough, then put two on. Okay, it's going to hold through all of those layer, layers just fine. Then you can either, if you trust yourself enough to go around this with a rotary cutter, I do not trust myself that much. I'm going to take, um, you can even do this with a regular pen, but I like using a friction pen because I don't have to worry about if I make a mistake. I'm just going to trace all the way around this template with my friction pen. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna let me go through both layers at the same time. Okay, so I'm just gonna trace out this one. Okay, now I can pick up my magnet, pick up my template, put my magnet back down, and now my pieces are stuck together still, okay? So now I can just cut out my shapes because I've marked my pattern right on my fabric. So here's my, the inside part of my mitt. I've got two pieces that match that are right sides together. Then we have the cuff to our oven mitt. It has, we've cut out, take my magnet off, cut out my shape. These, I need two that face the same way, plus they're gonna need interfacing. Um, hot tip, which I didn't do. It's easier if you put the interfacing on the pieces before you cut out the shape. I didn't do that. So, when you make yours, what I would do is I would take your, you know, cut out your, this piece measures 
like cut out a piece that's like seven by three okay a seven by three inch square or actually a seven by six inch square put your interfacing on it cut it in half layer these two right both of them right way up and then cut out this shape okay i should have done that i didn't so i'm going to fuse my interfacing to my other two shapes and then we'll be ready to start this phase Okay, so that's your extra tip for the day, which I should have done and I didn't think about it until just now. So fuse your, your interfacing on the back of your cuff pieces before you cut these shapes out. Now we're gonna take these two shapes and I'm just gonna sew the side seams up. On this one, we're gonna sew all the way around the mitt and leave the bottom open. From your cuff piece, you're also going to need to cut a piece of fabric to make a binding with. The pattern tells you how big it needs to be. Fold it in half and press it. Okay, so your seam allowance, your seam allowance can be a little bit, you know, we're, we're quilters, so we tend to go with a quarter inch. It can be a little bit bigger than that. So we're going to go ahead and sew around all of this, and then we're going to come back and talk some tips. So I used my stiletto and I parked a hole, parked, poked a hole in that little reference mark that was in the pattern. Then I laid it on top of my shape and with a, with a pen or a friction, I used a friction pen, I marked inside that hole. When you look at this pattern, it seems, if you're gonna sew a quarter inch seam allowance, it seems like this is way too far away, right? It's not. If you sew, you wanna make a nice sharp point and you stop there. So what I did was I sewed my quarter inch seam allowance seam allowance all the way around i stopped with my needle down where that dot is and then turned it and stitched all the way around so i only have a quarter inch seam allowance on there but that's how deep you need to get to get a quarter inch seam then we're going to take and snip our corners we definitely want to snip down into this pivot point so that we can turn this right way out then you can snip around the curve of both the big part and the thumb part of your mitt, don't cut into your thread, your seam allowance. Just cut the cut into the seam allowance, don't cut into the thread. And you don't have to cut a million cuts, do it about every three quarters of an inch, okay? And take my magnet off, because we're done with that part. Okay, then we're gonna turn this right way out. And then I'm gonna take my, my turning tool and I'm gonna roll those seams all the way out. And I also sewed my cuff together on the sides. Okay, so this is interfaced and this is sort of a tube now. We can also turn this right way out. So I did the same thing with my other template. So here's my template B. I took my pieces of lining fabric, put them right sides together and cut it out. So I can take my magnets off now. I can ditch my template now. In your kit, I've given you a fat quarter of a random piece of fabric. Um, it doesn't really matter because you're not gonna see it. This is essentially the fabric that you're gonna quilt this through. If you really like that fat quarter, keep it. Put something else you don't like in here to, you're just basically making an unseeable um, piece that's on the inside of the oven mitt. Okay, so I'm gonna put my piece of fabric down. I'm gonna lay my batting on top of this too. Then I'm gonna take my two pieces of my oven mitt, of the inside of my oven mitt, and I'm gonna lay them on this fabric. So this is cotton batting. For the most part, this should just kind of stick down on its own. If you're nervous about that process, if you feel like this might wiggle away from you in the quilting, um, I, I'm not above spraying this with 505. I'm gonna give you some tips on spraying your stuff down with 505. Now, if you feel like you can just pin this in a couple of places, you can still just go and put your magnets on here, which honestly is probably what I would do. It's just put your magnets on here and quilt around it. If you don't like that idea, or it bugs you that the magnets get stuck to your needle plate, lay everything out. You need very little of this. And honestly, I wouldn't normally do this on my cutting mat, but this is where you can see me. 
Just spray a little bit on your backing fabric, roll your batting over and lay it down. Same thing on this side. I really love 505 spray for lots of things. There's a lot of ways I see people use 505 spray that makes me cringe though. So, you know, use it to baste quilts and not much else. And then we're gonna take our oven mitts back and we're gonna spray this down just a little bit. Place it over since these are such small projects. Um, what I usually like to do is I have like a shipping box that sits next to my table and I'll lay everything down in the shipping box and then if there's any overspray, it goes into the box. Okay, so now they're all stuck together. This isn't gonna go anywhere. Now you can quilt this. You can quilt it any way you want. If you wanna just sew straight lines back and forth, cool. You wanna sew diagonal lines, cool. You wanna to try to free motion around the stormtroopers faces, that's cool too. However you wanna get there is the right way to do this. Personally, because I wanna get this done faster, I'm just gonna mark a couple of lines with my friction pen and I'm gonna um, just sort of grid quilt this because honestly, here's the real truth to this, you're not gonna see it. Okay, next hot tip for the day. <laughs> and, and I knew this and, and I should have done this when I showed it to you. If you're gonna cut your mitts out first, Spray this on the back of this, not on the batting, because then your foot won't stick to it when you're quilting it. Conversely, you can just take this fabric, your batting, and this fabric and lay it all together and just quilt the whole thing. And then you take your mitts and you lay this on top and you draw it out and you cut it. But you want them to be reversed of each other. So you cut this one out, flip this one over, and cut this one out. Make sense? Okay, so I opted to do mine the other way because I knew I wasn't gonna quilt it really heavy. If you're gonna quilt it really heavy, your fabric might shift too much and you would probably wanna do it the other way where you quilt your fabric and then um, cut out your mitts, but however, whichever way you feel more comfortable to get there. We're gonna put them together Again, this is a great time for your magnets, or you can pin them however you like. Personally, I'm gonna put my right sides together. I'm gonna take the flat part of my magnet, put it underneath, throw it on top, and they're gonna hold it together for me. So I don't have to fuss with that. And I can take this to my machine, and I'm gonna sew these two together. Once I sew these two together, we're gonna to put the whole, the whole oven mitt together. Okay, so quarter inch seam allowance all the way around. Don't forget that you have to come way down in this point um, you can use this mitt to give you your pivot point because remember it's way down in there. The shape of these are different though, so make sure you know that you got to get all the way down into there for your pivot point. Okay? Okay, so I stitched all the way around my mitt. Since I'm using my Luminaire, my free arm is kind of big. Um, it, it's just, it just is. So if your machine has a free arm that's too big to fit this in there like a sleeve, just fold the top piece back. And I'm just gonna sort of stay stitch this closed. So I took my, my lining pieces inside my mitt, my cuff piece, the, so there's a curved edge to your cuff piece and a straight edge to your cuff piece. Make sure the straight edge is lined up with your lining. So your silicone piece is on the inside. It's really important that you have the fabric come up past the silicone because then your, your foot won't touch the silicone so it won't get stuck up on it. I'm gonna use my sew tight magnets again for this step. Take the metal part of your magnet and put it down toward the bottom of your cuff and then pop it on there. And this way you don't have to have any clips or pins through this. It's just gonna hold it in there. So just like we did um, when we sewed this, sewed the quarter inch around our quilted part, 
we're going to open up our our layers we want all three layers together this should be sticking up a little less than a quarter inch above the silicone so we're going to lay the silicone on our sewing surface and pull the top back I'm using my J foot because I can, it's bigger than my quarter inch foot and I don't have to, you know, I can kind of see it. And the other thing I can do by doing this is I can move my needle back and forth to make, I can feel my silicones right there. So when I drop my needle down, right now I have it set just a little bit right of center. When I drop my needle down, I can see that my needle is just barely in the silicone, okay? Using a wider foot or an, um, not a quarter inch foot, you can have more control over that. So really slowly, because, because you've got a lot of weight over here, you don't want it to pull it out from under the needle. We're gonna sew just a little ways and, and move our fabric around, get our seams on the sides lined up. So the seam to your lining and the seam to your cuff should match up. And then stitch all the way around, making sure that you're hitting the silicone in between those layers. So having the two layers of fabric be what's touching your machine keeps everything from skipping around okay so if you're having issues to where you're hitting the silicone and you're skipping around then your fabric isn't quite long enough try to pull it up a little bit higher where you're just hitting fabric okay and yeah there's if this is a little bit fussy so just mess with it until it's until you're as fussy as it is this is the hardest part because we're sewing the inside of the cuff and so you got to kind of fight with it until it gets flat and then sew it okay so we're gonna sew all the way around this cuff and then we're gonna do the um, we're gonna put the inside in so inside your cuff here there's one of these bands see these sort of straight bands right inside here there's one right there okay so as a tip what I would do is take a marking tool and run it along that ridge just because you can't once you get it under the needle you can't really see it so just take a you know you can use a friction pen or a pencil and just mark inside where that ridge is because you want your needle to run right next to that space you want to sew right next to this line that you're making okay of course that's not the side we're sewing it on so I need to mark it on the inside well no you can sew it from this side so we're going to push this out the opposite of what we did before again if you can get your um your mitt around your free arm then that's even better because you can get this up underneath there but otherwise just push it back and get your foot up under here now since i'm using this j foot again what I can do is I can run that side of my foot and I can bump my needle all the way over as far as it's going to go. And then I can see that line I marked that way and I can stitch right on it. Now you want to make sure you're not stitching onto the other side of your mitt. So again, you got to be a little fussy about this, but as long as you take your time, it'll go right the first time, theoretically. And I just usually sew, I don't know, an inch or so. Move your, your mitt around to get it lined up again. And just keep following that line that you marked. Okay. And you can feel that groove there. So you can ride that inside of your J foot along that ridge. make sure that you're not sewing on the other side of your mitt that would be such a thick layer that you would definitely know if it would happen if it happened you'd probably hear it once you get it laid out where you can have a two inch or so space that you can sew on you're kind of golden
So we've gotten all the way around our cuff. So when we pull this up, so you can see just the very end of that ridge. And now you've got the outside of your cuff. Next, what we're going to do is take our binding. Remember, I, we had you take your piece of binding and iron it in half. We're going to make a ring with it. So we're just going to put this right sides together. When you press this seam open, you're going to want to repress the folded seam you did at the beginning, right? So we're going to make that flat and then we're going to fold this back over like that. And we're going to press all of that over again. All right, so now we have our quilted part of our mitt and our banded part of our mitt. We're going to take the quilted part and put it inside the silicone part. Okay, so put the put your fingers in the spaces, okay? And Theoretically, when these are all put together and lined up, the top part of the cuff should match the quilted part of the lining. Woohoo, it worked. So now what we have is essentially the part that needs to get, get bound. And we made our binding. So we're gonna line up all the edges of everything around the top. Take our binding piece if you fold your mitt and then put it inside your band, it'll fit easier, okay? Now we're gonna just line up all of our pieces here and we're gonna do it like a machine binding. You can hand bind this too. So we've got our groovy little Star Wars oven mitt. Okay, so that's how you work with this cool silicone stuff. I hope you, have, I hope you are inclined to and will have fun making these oven mitts just like I did. See you tomorrow.